At the beginning of my linear algebra class, I asked my students what was their favorite study tip. And overwhelmingly, person after person after person said that they liked to practice problems. So I'm a math professor, what do I think about this? Is practicing problems the way to ace a math test? And my answer is a qualified yes. My, my big sense of how to be an effective mathematician, how to be a student who learns how to become a mathematician, is that you need to spend a lot of time actively doing mathematics, getting your hands dirty, going in, diving into problems, and trying to solve those problems. That, that this is much more superior than spending all the time passively, where you're reading solutions that other people provide, or watching videos like the ones that I make where I provide the solutions to you. I think you need to spend a good, solid portion of time practicing problems yourselves. But I worry about it because there's good ways to practice problems and there's bad ways to practice problems. And so in this video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to practice problems effectively. Because what I don't want is a kind of character where when you look at some new problem, you sort of close your mind, you find some sample problem in the test book or online, and you sort of clone the answer out, barely thinking about why it works, and you just have some method to solve an answer, but don't really understand what's going on. That's what I want to avoid. So my first tip is this. I want, when you're doing a practice problem, to be actively engaged in what I call sense making. I want you to think about the underlying concepts that are going on. I want you to ask, why is what I'm doing works? Not just how am I supposed to solve this problem. I, I want you to think about what are the various steps and why are those steps valid? Why are those the correct steps to do? What's the sort of important process and concepts underlying this example? So be really concept focused when you're doing your studying. Number two, I want you to think about the big picture. A specific practice problem given in the back of the book say, well, this problem has a larger context. If it involves a word like, oh, I don't know, in linear algebra we talk about linear combinations, you should have this intuitive picture in your mind about what linear combinations are. And when you see this problem that involves linear combinations, you should try to try to slot that into the bigger picture. You should try to see how that problem makes sense with your intuitive idea of what a linear combination is. And then three, kind of like thinking about the big picture, I want you to do as much predicting as possible. A prediction is when you don't just look at one specific problem and you just sort of focus myopically on that. I want you to think, well, what other problems could Trevor give me? How could he modify this problem? If it changed in this way, how would I react? When you do this kind of prediction, first of all, it makes you much more prepared for being able to solve a test. Because I'm not going to give you the exact problems you've seen before, but I might give similar variations on them. If you've already thought through how would I react to different variations, that's very important. But more importantly, when you think about the different variations, it, it helps to connect to the larger picture. It helps you to think more conceptually. Now, the fourth thing I want to say is this is one of the things that we know from the literature on how people learn probably better than anything else, and it's called spaced practice. The other option to space practice is something called mass practice, what a lot of people do for studying, which is right before the test, the day before the test, they do a whole mountain of studying all in one time. Now take that same block of time, however much you're willing to spend, and imagine now dividing it out over a couple different weeks, or ideally even longer than that, where you do, say, even as short as 10 or 15 minutes at a time, you do a little bit of studying, and then you go away and do other stuff, and then you do a little bit more studying and go away and do other stuff. Now, this feels Terrible, because when you come in and you only study something very briefly and you come back a day later, you spend half of that time just trying to remember, like, what was the terminology, what were the ideas. It takes a while just to recollect what you're even talking about. But that sort of intellectual pain of going through that process is exactly how you start to remember stuff long term. You don't want to just learn it really high once and have it slowly decay over time. You want to learn it, have it decay a little, learn it, have it decay a little, learn it, and so on. And doing that process allows you to improve your long-term retention by an enormous amount. So in the context of studying for a test, I would say do a whole bunch of little studying over a longer period of time where you get to get back into it and it will feel a little bit worse, like your studying seems in, in a sense less effective. You're not deluded by being like, oh, I, I understand this problem because like an hour and two hours ago, I just saw another one like it. You don't have that safety blanket. You really have to recollect it out of your long-term memory. But if you can pull it out of your long-term memory, that's what you're actually going to be needing for the test and in particular for the final exam. So space your practice out. And then the fifth point, it's kind of the same, 
is something called interleaving. If I'm in some specific section, say I'm in 1.5 of the textbook, and I see the problems, then I immediately know the context that I should use the methods of 1.5 to solve that particular type of problem. But that's not how a test appears. A test doesn't say this is the problem from 1.5, you've just done 10 problems from 1.5, here's your 11th problem from 1.5. It just has the question from 1.5 at some point mixed into this larger test. And you have to figure out the from context how are you supposed to solve it? What are the relevant tools you have at your disposal? All of those kind of things. So interleaving says this, don't just study one section in one big clump and then another day set do a different section in a big clump. Mix the sections around. Choose a problem from one section and then right after do a problem from a very different section and then call it a day and come back eight hours later and choose some other sections. When you interleave this way, taking different subject content and trying to sort of mash it up together, again it feels worse. So you don't have that safety blanket of doing a whole bunch of problems all in a row, all of the same sort of basic category. It feels worse, but you remember it better long term. So those are my suggestions. I want you to really focus on the concepts. I want you to think bigger picture. Where is what you're doing related to the larger thing? I want you to make prediction after prediction. If I tweak this little thing, how would it change? I want you to space out your practice, and I want you to interleave your practice. And if you do those five things, I think your practicing of mathematics, which is, I believe, already pretty good, is just gonna take it right up to that next level, and it'll help you do well on the test, and more importantly, to effectively learn mathematics.